Welcome back to the podcast episode 56. As always, you're here with Hoop, Saney, and the infamous ZZ Huncho. I am exhausted. Uh, it was a travel day for me. I was in Boston for the Knicks Celtics double overtime thriller. Did you guys watch the game from home? I mean, it was nuts. Yeah, I watched it on live. Um, I only watched the overtime. Or like, I watched it from three minutes left in the fourth. I'll be honest, I didn't watch the whole game. Uh, it was entertaining, though. I, when I saw Julius Randle lose the ball in the fourth on that game-winning attempt, I was like, oh, oh, no. Like, is this it? But, I mean, hey, they, they came back to, to have a momentum loss like that, but to still win the game in Boston, that was pretty dope. It was it was cool. I watched uh, – I remember checking in on the score around, like, I don't know if it was the second or third quarter. Correct me if I'm wrong, Hoop, but Boston was up big in this game at one point. They were. They were, and like, around 15. I, yeah, I was. It was like 15, 20 range, and I was sitting there saying like, "Up, oh, up, oh, uh, Boston's like, gonna get them. I guess they're gonna stop the run." And then I check back in late in the fourth quarter. It was like maybe five minutes left. It's like a two, three point game, and I'm like, "What the hell did Julius Randle do?" I know Brunson didn't play, so uh, like for all of that to happen to go double OT, no Brunson, Randle doing his thing, like it it's the the Knicks are the Celtics kryptonite bro like that's the best way I could put it it's hey, it's bad. three and one this season and not I'm it's so fun to be a troll in a opposing crowd like whenever I've gone into into a away game it was always like just two random teams it's never been the Knicks so now that I'm there and there's like you see a couple other blue and orange jackets in the stands like obviously New Yorkers are very loud in general there was one guy behind me who was just you know no regard for anyone around him just chirping like if, if you were in the wrong setting, you know, someone would have threw hands, but it was just so funny to to watch all that go down. And luckily, um, I had a connection to Richard Jefferson. We've spoken on TikTok and he was commentating the game as a color commentator. Um, so he brought me on the court afterwards. It was dope. He brought me through this like exit that the announcers take. I saw JJ Redick. I saw Ryan Rucco, who's the play by play guy. Super nice. I got a picture with them and RJ signed my my uh my richard jefferson denver nuggets jersey which i got as a troll <laughs> he only he might have played 20 games as a nugget um but it was just a whole lot of fun and i took the ferry you, back today long drive but i'm here did you take a shot on the court no it was afterwards uh, there, there were no damn. balls there um but that would have been that's definitely a milestone as well gotta make a shot on the court yes sir um i, I would have honestly if i didn't have that career ending uh, sprained ear uh, sprained so ear that's on. so i'm doing a podcast now yeah. <laughs> i busted funny, the cartilage funny. in my nose i would have been in the league <laughs> <laughs> blue season ain't no joke for me man <laughs> but yeah i mean those guys are really tall um i mentioned to you guys before like jj reddick and, and uh richard jefferson are like they feel like they're the same height um which you don't realize on TV. You see on 2K, it's like, oh, you know, JJ's a little scrawny JJ Reddick seems He's short, built. and that's not a hater to, to JJ Reddick. But when I think he of has like short, a shooter... He has short person energy. He yeah, does. He has short person energy. Like, I'm not trying to be an, an asshole when I say that. Like, I love JJ Reddick. He's like one, genuinely one of the only other podcasts I'll listen to outside yeah, of the podcast. Sure. Like, full episodes. Um, But he does give short energy, man. That's not... <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> Zaney, I'll, I'll be straight. You do, too. <laughs> hey that's the thing i'm no, not even I, i've told I'm that not... to you too i've, I've told yeah that to like you. Was, i understand it like i also give the same energy but as hoop may know i'm not short I'm, i don't think i i'm sure yeah, no I think he's, I'm... he's not he's not yeah i'm the tallest person on I... this podcast by the way by a lot actually yeah by, by a lot, lot. <laughs> Lee, what are you six five six five yes sir i'm like six six one yeah he'd make me look like a midget and then i'm uh, like five eleven six he's not far behind yeah. um how about the almost other game all, that happened all the way yesterday? Six foot game. Wait, what? Yeah, I was gonna say all, all the <laughs> six foot game. Uh, but... <laughs> yeah, but speaking on uh, speaking going but circling back to the NBA, obviously, uh, we had an absolute banger of a regular season game. One to remember when thinking about this season: the Mavs versus the Suns. Honestly, when you really take a deep dive into that game, outside of their beef from last year, like that team has the potential to have one of the best rivalries we have seen in NBA history. When you really dig deep and think about it, um, obviously the embarrassment Luca gave them after Devin Booker talked all that trash. Uh, Luca said, hey, it's easy to talk, talk tough when you're up. And then another famous quote, it's easy to talk tough when it's three seconds left in the game. 
<laughs> seems like Luca always has these like mafia boss type quotes, but uh, that, that's that's you, the thing that impressed me was the fact that he was able to come up with a quote like that after missing like the easiest shot I've seen in my life. No, but that to me, honestly, like he that still came confidence. on top at the internet. That's sh- that, which is impressive. That's, <laughs> that shows confidence to me. And listen, I'm not here to defend. I have no bias bias towards Devin Booker or, or Luca. I don't hate or love either of them. Well, like I love watching them play, but it's not like you know what I mean. Like I'm not yeah. out here defending off of a biased take like this is just from a fan's perspective um Luca missed it obviously a a wide open shot he should not have missed it but it happens we've seen a lot of NBA legends miss LeBron missed yeah layup against the Wizards where he literally traveled you know what I mean like I can name off some some questionable moments from every star It, it happens man when you play the NBA when you play basketball for that long you're bound to get some weird shot that doesn't go in of course it happened to be against the Suns in that setting but when you think about the Suns and the Mavs and the roots of, of their beef, Kyrie and Kevin Durant being on both sides now or uh, either side now, uh, Luca obviously and Devin Booker, like, I love it. DeAndre Ayton and Maxi Kelbert. No, I'm joking. But, <laughs> you said, you uh, said Kleber, Kelber? Right? What, what's his name? Cle- Kleber? Kleber? Kleber. You guys know me. I'm, I butcher names. I butcher names. I butcher names. We, we know this. We know this. Jericho, <laughs> man. Jericho Sims. But, um, I think, in my opinion, that was the best regular season game this year so far. Um, I think the Suns are scary, but the Mavs are as well. I think the fact that the Mavs were able to keep up with the Suns when the Suns were, when Devin Booker and Kevin Durant were playing at the level they were playing at, um, it, man, I don't know. It, it put them in a series. I think, I, no, I think I think it goes a lot. I think it I, goes. A, I think it's a lot tougher than people make it out to be. And the, and the reason I'm having like I'm I'm taking a second to say this is because obviously the the I got the Suns regular easily, NBA fan would say the Suns inst- instantly, right? They'll say the Suns. Right. Hey, to me, I think it's <laughs> a lot mean, harder than what that. What do you mean regular? Dog, like I mean, they like got the majority, no the majority, rim protection. The majority, they got the majority, no I mean, rim like, protection. I, I meant like the majority. Like a majority of people will say the Suns, but to me, it's like I mean, it's just, like we could have said that about the Mavs last year, and look what happened. Like when it comes playoff time, man, I'm taking a dog over a nah, bro. It's KD, a, bro. A Kevin Durant is a dog. What, I don't know what, I'm what to are say. we saying? I don't know what I'm trying to say. No, 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 no. I'm taking Here's... Luka Doncic. I'm taking Luka Doncic, bro. I'm taking uh, Luka. I, I, I oh, believe in the Mavs. Seven game series. Seven game series. Playoff I can't time. Do you're taking, it, bro. You're taking I can't do it. The reason, and yeah, the reason right. that I can't do it I is mainly so. because I think when so. I watched that game last night, bro, everything became crystal freaking clear to me about both teams. I've said it before, Phoenix. For as great as an addition that a Kevin Durant is to this team, prior to Kevin Durant getting there, the team was a playoff team. With Kevin Durant, they are immediately a championship contender. And the reason is mainly because, like you said, it's weird how Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving have basically, like, involuntarily inserted themselves into a beef that they had no prior knowledge or prior, like, you know, involvement in prior to. But Kevin Durant is like Devin Booker's older brother, like a big brother. Kevin Durant is the type of person where D-Book is sitting here like, hey, this this uh, Slovenian legend just disrespected me on my home court last year. I need you to come handle this, all right? Kid's been, kid's been handing out ass whooping since he was 16, the grown man. I need you to come handle this. Kevin Durant pulls up and drops 36 points on 17 shots. I... It's incredible. He shot, I think, 70%, close to it at least last night. 37 points, my bad. That's insane. And when you look at the overall game between Devin Booker and Luka Doncic alone last night, D-Book had a better game, hands down. Uh, more rebounds, better efficiency, all that you could have asked for. Um, but looking at the Phoenix Suns, everybody else, right, outside of Kevin Durant and Devin Booker, the problem with this Phoenix Suns team, I've said it before, I'll say it again, depth is the biggest issue. The problem with the Dallas Mavericks, defense is the biggest issue. The Dallas Mavericks got Kyrie Irving and decided to turn him into a freaking human band-aid and say, we're going to patch up all of our defensive problems that we knew we needed going into the trade deadline. And we just said, to hell with all that, we got Kyrie Irving. In this game alone, Kyrie and Dev- and uh, uh, Luka Doncic, rather, needed to drop 30-plus in order to cont- compete, right? They needed to. If you watch the first seven minutes of this game, you will see Kyrie, Luka, Kyrie, Luka. That was how the possessions were going. It took a while before a Reggie Bullock to come in there, and he chipped in 10, 10 points, but he hit like a couple of threes in the first quarter. Tim Hardaway Jr. had to do his thing to help this team back into it. And when you look at when you look at the defense alone, like the first couple of plays, when you're trying to evaluate this Phoenix team, you got to think like Chris Paul's role is literally not that is is not that much. Uh, 
honestly, let me turn this down a little bit. It's not, it's not that much, honestly. And that's mainly because he's regressed. He's 38 years old. He doesn't have to take 12 shots, 13 shots anymore. He can go out there and live with six to seven attempts. DeAndre Ayton, we're not talking about him either. He had nine points. He had the least amount of points in the starting lineup besides Josh Okogie. Okay. Josh Okogie had nine points, but the reason, don't even get me started, bro. Don't get me started no, on Aiton, bro. Hold on. Don't hold get on. me started on Aiton. I'm starting to sympathize with DeAndre Ayton. <laughs> I heard a different. Saney's <laughs> face just went super stern. We have been a DeAndre Ayton, anti DeAndre Ayton podcast for the last however many months. But and I, I have perfect I reason see... to after hoop. The, what I see is obviously someone who needs to buy in to win a championship. And I think that if he doesn't buy in, he's being a sore, you know, person. But at the same time, he was brought in as a first overall pick. Um, he's expected to have the offense ran through him. I've seen plenty of times, uh, I apologize for that noise, where TikTokers have shown possessions of him running the floor after grabbing a defensive rebound and sealing off Kyrie Irving. I saw this one specifically. Um, and they don't give him the ball. Like it's a Josh Okogie three. Um, they don't treat him. They treat him like he's an afterthought. And while he, to be fair, he is an afterthought. It's because of the fact that the Suns' offense does not respect him. And I don't know what he's like off the court. I don't know if he's a jerk, and that's why they shouldn't respect him. Because look at why look at look at his progression throughout his season. But that, so that's what I'm saying. Contender. If you're, you're not giving him opportunity, to, but to he's progress. had the opportunity when they were when they were tanking, when they were still in that position where they're trying well, he to find was a way young. to win games. When Chris Paul came, I don't care if he was young. You're a number oh one overall gosh. pick. You're a number one overall pick. Devin yeah, Booker is not con- Devin Booker isn't even conceding shots to Kevin Durant. Like, I mean, not yet. Devin Booker is still leading the team in shots. But in this every is game. before. This is before even Chris Paul came. He had like two or three seasons before even. But Chris how Paul old came. was he? Listen, I don't care how old he was. He oh was a number one pick. Gosh. He was a number. He's a number one pick that hasn't. What shown about any Shea? <laughs> Shay, what do you mean? Younger? What about Shay? When Shay when what do you mean? Younger, what about Shay? Shay has improved every. No, that's a lie. That's a lie. Shay has improved every <laughs> single freaking season he has entered this league. You take that back, bro. Come on, now you talking? You talking crazy? Number one, <laughs> Shay is like an eleventh overall pick. I'm not expecting him to become a superstar by the time he's in his fifth season, which he did. Number two, go look at go look. Not even just a statue. Go look at his game. Look at how much his bag his his game um, has matured. You get what since I'm saying? His season. I, I don't get what you're take, saying. I don't, pe- I don't sympathize with him. Oh I don't sympathize with him. I don't sympathize. I don't sympathize. John Morant. You want to stay 16 and 10 your whole career? You want to stay 16 and 10 your whole career? They got to give him the ball to be more than Shoot. 16 and 10. I agree. DeAndre Ayton is not this elite center like everyone says he is. But for him to become more valuable and raise his stock as a player, true, as a first too. overall pick, you need the ball. I you need they, They're basically, for yeah. them to win, he needs to be a block shots, run the floor, throw down alley-oops right. like that plug, like, like a, like the Warriors had and that just defensive stopper. When in reality, that's, he's, I don't want to say not he's a too good for stopper that to me. because he's not, he's not even, that, he's not, I'm saying that's that what good. he's supposed to be when okay, in exactly. fact, so he's a first the overall end, pick. Sure. Who's been, you know what? Been good. He's been good. I, you know what? I'll give you this. I'll give you this. Offensively, sure. There's not a lot of room for him to improve because they don't want to run the offense room or they don't want to give him more touches. Well, right? here's defensively. What the hell has he done? What does he do as a seven foot center defensively? You're supposed to be your number one overall pick as a center. What do you do defensively? He has not done. He he, he is not great defensively at all. I am not. Right, if I am a team going into a game, I am not scared of DeAndre. In the game, in the six of the finals, I am and not. Monty Williams sat there and said, I promise "Yeah, you we're going to throw DeAndre at him. That's our guy. That's where we're going to go." And then he got destroyed. But here's my thing with here's my thing. He's with soft in the paint. He's soft no, no, in the no, paint. No, 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 no. Hey, I DeAndre, even, I, I tried. My spill. I, I tried. Done. No, <laughs> I, I'm. Understand this. If a player, if a player, if if a player ever listens to our pod, I'm not hating on them as a person. I have no idea who you are as a person. I'm reflecting this based solely off of your game okay you don't have the game of a number one overall pick it's plain it's, i don't either i don't either bro i, I, I don't just either but, pissed but off if look, josh Okoji took a wide open three instead of passing it to me when i had Kyrie sure offensively i give That's, you i'll admit yeah. offensively you know what the more you mention it fine they don't want to run the offense room i'll give you that one it's but not even run it through him it's it's giving right, touches just like give him more touches. touches it's the give rudy gobert touches. treatment Except he here, plays no defense. Well, not no defense, no defense, but he's he's not he's but not defensively, really defensively, right, right, defensively. Right. This, he's this, not this, even this he's not like top ten in terms of center. Look at it from both sides. I look defense. at it from hoop side and I look at it from Saney's side. I'm not out here saying that like giving up hope on DeAndre Aiden to become great, you know, interiorly on the defensive end. What I'm saying is when I look at DeAndre Aiden and his progression, and you look back to when he got drafted, what was it, 2017, 2018, around that time to now, right? It's been about five, six years. Uh, 
and you look at the progression, like Sandy said, if he's content with being the 16 and 10 guy, then all, you know, all the glory be to him, you know, whatever. But when you are looking at this Phoenix Suns team that is constructed right now and what his responsibilities are, case in point, last night, he had nine points on six shots, but 16 boards, one block, right? You're going to need a little bit more. When you're looking at the makeup of the team offensively, it's shifted completely because now you have to cater to a Kevin Durant, who you can pretty much drop onto any team in the league, and he can play with pretty much any style of offense, right? His game just complements it. He wants to hoop. And you would think to yourself naturally, if I'm DeAndre Aiden, I'm like, yeah, I got Kevin Durant on my team. How many shots you want, KD? All right, cool. You got it because you're Kevin Durant. We already got a deep book. We got two dynamic stores. Let's, let's you know, build off of that. When you look at Chris Paul and DeAndre Aiden specifically, how they look in this big four specifically. Chris Paul's load is taken off tremendously. DeAndre Ayton's load and expectations are kind of altered now because I'm not expecting DeAndre Ayton to add on to Kevin Durant and, do, and Devin Booker having over 35 points in a game. I'm not expecting DeAndre Ayton to have 31 alongside with him. What I'm expecting is something, something that can contribute to a win. Last night, particularly, we were talking about, me and Sandy were texting about this, and I said, well, he's got 16 rebounds. Sandy was like, well, who the hell is he going up against? I laughed my ass off. I did. Because he was going up against Dwight Powell, and that was it. Dwight Powell, they didn't even play JaVale McGee last night. Jason Kidd has has JaVale McGee four. Four. He had like four. And how many rebounds does Dwight Powell have? Like four? To that point, I can see Sandy's point. Yeah, four. (laughs) Dwight Powell I'm telling you, I do not remember Dwight Powell grabbing a rebound. Like I remember, Dwight Powell grabbed one yeah. open rebound and he handed it into the. I, it I do like want to. Okay. I do want to say something on this Aiton situation. When we were saying when the Suns were tanking before Paul, um, Aiton his rookie year was sixteen and ten. His second year he was eighteen and eleven and a half. Um, he was taking in that second year fifteen shots a game. The first year was twelve. Um, he was fifty four percent from the field. I'm sure he still had a, a healthy diet of those little short fades and whatever he does on that, the here's end. the thing but he only on. played 38 games the, that season. he did he did but the, i'm saying that that was a sample size the next season he goes down to 10 shots a game as a first overall pick who has shown progression when he was given the ball i i would be upset no but when he came he back needs, remember, i'm saying he, year, he needs came to buy in that was I'm the year he came he back because he to took peds in. or something like he took some drug remember yeah. and the nba caught him and he got banned it was like that's with the urine right or something like that exactly so that's probably why he got a drop off bro the, he didn't play basketball for the, a year. Why would they? <sighs> he didn't play basketball for a whole season, bro. Why would I trust? Why would I trust to move the ball through him when when Chris Paul just got traded to that team? That's the year because they went he to just, the finals. He, he wasted That's the first year they overall the pick on a on a plug and play center. I, I'm saying he needs to buy in if he wants to be successful with this team. He needs to buy in as the dirty work guy. And I think I like I will give him. You know, I'm not going to praise him for being. You know, you're such a good talent. You don't need to do this. I think he needs to do it. But I understand his side of it. Right. When you're just kind of plugging him in when you're your first overall pick and you did what you were asked to do for the most part. I mean, he's not Luca. He's not other guys who were picked in the draft, but as a first overall pick, I think DeAndre he Aiden, was, he's underrated. That's what I'm saying. And I think he is not, not like not letting sure. them I, down I, I as if you guys are saying. He's un, well. I don't think he's underrated because I'm not, he's the first overall pick. Well, I'm underrated saying, to your guys' standards. Like you, <laughs> you like hate for him. For me, my standards, I don't, for, if he was picked, if he okay. was picked like outside the top five, I'd be like, great pick. But it's the fact that he went first in the draft class with guys like Luca and that, Shea that's a perspective and even that Trey, I can respect because it's like, like you're dog. looking at him from what the hell. But that here's and you know what, what? you know what you know what you know what, what you know what you know what him? fair enough I give it to DeAndre. Yeah. What the hell has yeah. Marvin Bagley done? I'll give him oh the same God. treatment. I'll give him the same treatment. You're right, Hoop. You know what I put I pin too much on DeAndre. Ayn. At least he's doing he's something with his career. Sacramento. What the hell has Marvin Bagley done? Who the hell decided Marvin Bagley should be the number one? Yeah, was he still in Detroit? <laughs> I don't know where he is. I don't know where he is. <laughs> him, him and James Wiseman. What are they doing? Six night. <laughs> what are they doing? He's, <laughs> what is happening? What, what, what happened in that draft class? How were the first two picks? I've never seen a draft class where the first two picks were that wow. busted and then like three superstars came right after it. <laughs> I can't don't put, put Bagley and Aiden in the same it's, sentence, bro. Don't do, don't do that. Don't do that. DeAndre Ayton went first. Marvin Bagley went second. Luca goes third. Trey Young goes fifth. Luka Shea goes Alexander goes eleventh. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. Then an MPJ wasn't MPJ like 14th that draft class too? Wasn't he in that draft? Class? I take MPJ <laughs> with a busted back over Marvin Bagley. Over Marvin Bagley. I would take. I would take. I would take MPJ, not with a busted back, like waiting for him to recover on the court with the busted back over Marvin Bagley. No, but all I'm saying is that's <laughs> all I'm. That dude got a clip. 
no, that dude we, does we, not we, miss. We, you know what? We, we're being too harsh. We're joking. But I mean, if if we want to fade away from this this Suns talk, because we got a lot to talk about today. Um, a big big old name in the news, John Morant. We're not going to talk about John Morant specifically. We're going to talk about the Grizzlies in general and, and how how they're going to play out with all this mumbo jumbo going on. But just real quick, if somehow you don't know, um, John Morant is in a really really big hole right now. That he he dug himself a really deep hole. Um, the police are now investigating this IG live he had after his game in the Nuggets where he was in a club and he flashed a gun. Before that, obviously, I think we talked about it on the show. Uh, he p- uh, supposedly beat up a 17-year-old, uh, supposedly checked a Memphis mall security guard because his mom called him to. Um, he also you know pointed saying? a laser beam at the Indiana. A laser beam at the Pacers. Yeah, I'm just going to say, you know. Grizzlies fans, it does not look like there will be a parade in your city anytime soon. Well, I don't the know big what reason, John The big reason for, this is it, for the investigation, was it because since he was in Denver, he had to have brought the gun yep. on the plane, on the team plane, yeah. which is like, that's like, the big one. Hey, and, and I I'm, want a victory I'm, lap. No, no, no. I'm generally, I don't know if I'm, I told you guys on the pod, but I've said it to you in private. I said within two years, I think John Moran is going to be pretty much out the league. And this yeah, indefinite league. suspension, like, bro, it happened like a week later. It's 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 looking it's looking like it will, and I I again I want to ask what parade are they talking about? I'm fine what parade in the, in the city? As John Think Moran about how many about. quotes John Moran. There will has be no parade year. in Memphis. There will be no. He's not fined in the West. He is fined in the West. That oh, man is fined in the West. Okay, John Moran. <laughs> I don't That's an know. All time great bar, Saney. Th- thank you, but at the same time, it's like it bro, I don't I don't understand it. He was not like this going into the league. First, like, three seasons, even, he was quiet. Then he got a little corny on Twitter. I did not think corniness on Twitter would turn to beating up a 17-year-old. I'm not going to say he did it. But at the same time, for this, no for like, the last week has not helped his case. Because for those accusations to come out, and then, I remember, I mean, the 17-year-old thing yeah. came out in the summer. But the gun thing came out last week. And then the Memphis Grizzlies security guard came out. And then now he's seen with a gun in uh in Denver. Um. Taylor Jenkins was literally like, I don't know when Jaw's gonna be back, but he he's taken responsibility for his actions, and we hope he's back with the team, bro. Yeah, I would take responsibility for my actions too if I got caught with a gun in Denver, uh, and I'm supposed to be making two hundred million dollars in the NBA. That's all I'm gonna say. But I, I, no, no, they did not. Wait, 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 wait hold on. Did they, they win that game against Denver? <laughs> no, no, no. So he no, went to no, the club. No. He went to the club after losing. And he thinks he's fine in the West. You went to the club after losing with a gun. And you I, think you're fine in the West. That's I think Jokic can take three That's, bullets and still drop a triple-double. That dude I think, is like... Bro... <laughs> that dude is a bear. <laughs> bro, he, he could take more bullets than missed shots in a game. The Serbian soldier. I promise you. That's crazy. That's, how, that's, that's Jokic. But... Man, I, I'm confused, but I mean, what do you... Bro, uh, uh, let's fade away from Jaw, because I, I kind of ranted on Jaw for a bit, even though I said I wouldn't. What the, the hell do the Grizzlies do now? Harsh. Brandon Clark is out with a torn bro, meniscus. Dylan uh, Brooks, 25 shots a game, baby. <laughs> Dylan Brooks is... I remember Hoop, Hoop made a video about how Dylan Brooks will just take the most random yeah. shots and the Grizzlies <laughs> give him the green light. There will not be a red light in Memphis when it comes to Dylan Brooks for the next few games. Dylan Brooks... It, it, listen, if you, if you want to take a, a big risk on, on your fantasy team or some parlays... You put Dylan yep. Brooks up there because no, he's real either going to drop 40 he's gonna a get night. Stats. Yeah. He's either going to get 40 a night or 40 misses a night. There's no in-between. I genuinely do not think there's an in-between for Dylan Brooks. He's either going to become our TJ Warren from the bubble or he's going to become our Lynn no, Sanity and, and in, on the, Houston. The crazy part is... There's no in-between here. It's but, not... Uh, the I, Grizzlies in general, season, it's a joke. Bro, and it's a joke. It for, the, for the Grizzlies alone, I think all the way back into the offseason, right? After the Dubs won the championship, the first team to talk shit to the Warriors is the Grizzlies. The first team, not even the Celtics. The Celtics tipped their hat to them and was just like, yeah, you know, championship DNA experience that worked. But the Grizzlies sitting here like, hey, hey John Moran on Twitter, uh, hey, hey, we spend in the block on Christmas. We only, we, we, we pull it up to your low on Christmas. We, we, at, we at your doorstep on Christmas like we want it. And then Dre's like, Dre's sitting there giving them like the, oh, all right, young fella, like, you know, you if you really want it, like, let's see how bad you really want it. And then, you know, Adam Silver clears it, and then Draymond, and then John, John, John adds Draymond. It's like we got what we wanted, big bro. Like y- y'all look like y'all look like clowns. Y'all look like middle school. Y'all look like JV trying to impress varsity. That's what that's what the Grizzlies look like. They look like a really good ass JV team trying to impress varsity, trying to let like, hey, you see what we did to this team? All right, you ain't gonna do it to us. Great. The Grizzlies get an opportunity handed to them by either God Himself or Santa Claus uh, on Christmas, and they fail. 
They, 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 not, not like, and I'm talking about a golden opportunity. You have no Steph, you have no Wiggins, and you fail like that on Jesus's birthday. Like, let, like, like, can we just take a moment? Clay Thompson out here trolling Dylan Brooks, popping shots. Dylan Brooks falling on his ass. Clay just sitting there. Yeah, how you like that? Draymond sticking his tongue out at him. Like, the, 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 it's turned into a schoolyard, like, recess type game of just like fifth graders sticking their tongues out and telling everybody that, that telling the other team that they suck. And the Grizzlies, we had to sit there and listen and watch that. Not to mention the fact that John Morant said, I'm fine in the Western Conference to Malika Andrews. I'm fine in the West. Said the only team that he has to worry about come from the Eastern Conference, Milwaukee, Boston. Didn't even say anything about the Nuggets or any team that was ahead of them at the time It alone. The defending champions. The one, like the thing that bugs me about this Grizzlies team so much is that they talk so much stuff for a team that the Minnesota Timberwolves took to seven games in the first round last year. They talk so much stuff for a team that let Patrick Beverly's playoff dreams almost prosper farther than the first round last year. Almost. Almost. They get into the they get into the playoffs with the with the Warriors. They did they don't make it that far. It's that simple. We get into this year. I'm looking at the makeup of the team and everything since that statement, since I'm fine in the West, has gone downhill for the Memphis Grizzlies. So much so that I believe that they deserve a 30 for 30. I don't give a damn what happens later this year. I don't give a damn if John doesn't come back. I don't give a, I don't care. They give them green light a 30 for 30 and title it I'm fine in the West. Oh, like, bruh, he's like, gonna he's gonna do like, that interview through you a jail would, phone. You would think that you would think that the Memphis Grizzlies. No, no, no. He's joking, but I'm not. You would think that <laughs> no, the I'm Memphis joking, Grizzlies, I'm joking. a young team like this with all this damn talent in the world, all this damn potential. <laughs> they, I said it in a YouTube, I said it in a TikTok video. You 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 go into this league with two things on your mind. All right, one of them is you're gonna give it your all. Two of them is you're gonna shoot for the stars. John Morant chose option two. He chose almost to shoot every single one of them stars down. One by one with a little blicky on Instagram live after losing, after losing to the number one seed to the potential three straight MVP. You go to a nightclub and you are just posted up with a strap and thinking to yourself, like, I got to think if I'm John Morant, you got a you got a 17 year old kid putting a case against you. You got the, the laser incident from the Indiana situation. You got the security guard situation on you. You just got sponsored or just just did the uh, endorsement with Powerade. You did the other endorsement with Nike. You have all of these good and bad things. But he is a real one. You got to think, too. But he's Memphis a real not... one, though. But, he, like, but yeah, he's in the episode, real one. In the episode, who convinced like, me? And the, thing, in the, the episode, who convinced me? The most annoyed about yeah. this Grizzlies team, Hoop, I'm going to let you go. But the thing that gets me the most annoyed about this Grizzlies team is that when you look at the head of the table, the guy that's leading the pack of these fucking, like, wolves or coyotes or young puppies or whatever you want to call them, like, the person that's leading the charge is a 23-year-old John Morant who is sitting here on Twitter posting and retweeting every NBA young boy song that drops knowing it more word for word and bar for bar than LeBron James himself. I'm like, damn, you mean to tell me that you are leading this young core? Like, and we're supposed to, we're supposed to sit here and believe that the Grizzlies can win a championship and they're going to have the championship mentality and all these things when they lack the experience alone, alone, the mental capacity, it seems to be mature enough to look at the remaining 20, three games of the season and say maybe we should be kind of more focused on like you know our craft and things of that nature and, and building our brand and, and making sure that we can be able to contend with these teams that the western conference got shaken up the western conference got completely shaken up and it seems like the grizzlies are just sitting there like all smiles and and nerf guns ahead just sitting there like ah oh, yeah we're good like yeah katie's on the suns who cares the warriors are starting to get back in form who cares the nuggets have still are still the 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 top of the food chain of the western conference we don't care so I don't know how to look at and dissect this Grizzlies team at all. Brandon Clark is a big, big addition to this team, has been for the past few years. Him going down is just is just rough because you don't have anybody outside of JJJ that can really get it done and, and do the things that you need him to do interiorly on the defensive end and, and offensive. So I don't know how to really – I don't know how to – how to analyze this team anymore. If Jaw's out for God knows how long, and it's all up to Dylan Brooks. Like, listen, I can deal with Steph Curry being out and Andrew Wiggins and saying, okay, Clay, lead the way. But you mean to tell me that now they're like, all right, Dylan Brooks. All right, Dylan, lead us. Lead us, please. And you know, oh, God. Well, yeah, they're they're just, nope. they're not much of a threat anymore. Um, I have just two more things to add. First off, uh, Tyus Jones is going to break out. He has been ridiculous. Every time John Morant's been out, I think he might be so good to the point where he's going to need to get paid a lot of money, and he's going to be a really good starting point guard on another team very soon for a long, long time. He is really good. 
And the other thing I want to say is Memphis doesn't deserve this, man. They they get a guy through the draft that can quite easily go down as their best player in history, possibly lead them to the Western Conference Finals, a finals appearance. Like, this is supposed to be the truth. A small market that can't really bring in free agents like that. And then you lose them to this? Memphis doesn't deserve this. They don't. To be fair, we, we like we don't know what's going to happen with Jaw yet. I feel like he's going to get past this. I feel like somehow they're going to get him out of it. He's too much of a superstar. The NBA is going to exactly. pull some strings. But the, the one other thing I wanted to add was this doesn't really relate to much. But it, I just thought it was funny how the two locker room leaders of the Grizzlies, I heard this from Desmond Bain's podcast. It was kind of inferred that these two guys were like the voices in the locker room. It's John Morant and Dylan Brooks because he's the longest tenured Grizzly. <laughs> what, you have nothing, What is bro. that going to mean for your team, man? Like, bro. What is that going to mean? Hell yeah. Bro, Dylan Brooks has been in the league for a while now that I think about it. Yes. He was that he was chugging up shots when the Grizzlies were it, bad. It doesn't like in the bubble. Yeah. The Grizzlies have nothing. Before bro. Then, Dylan yeah. Brooks is going to keep slandering Draymond no, Green's name roster. in the media, I guess. But that's neither here nor there. Dylan Brooks, did you? Bane is for sure, for sure. Bane is very good. I don't want to. I don't want to omit. The, you can't go. Bane, yeah, but they're not going anywhere. We do. We do. we want to head into another Western Conference team. We do. We uh, want to talk. One that's directly the related Memphis to Grizzlies them. To the freaking yeah. Golden State Warriors, ladies and gentlemen. The Grizzlies' biggest rival, not the Warriors, but the Grizzlies' biggest rival, is is to them is the Golden State Warriors. Um, it's no competition. Golden State's who's the Golden State? Who do you think Golden State's biggest in rival? In the Western Conference, right now. Uh, honestly, and I mean. Any conference. Anything. I would say recency Any bias conference. alone, you could say Boston because it's going to be a big game regardless. But I can say the same thing with Memphis. So it's like, uh, nah, it's, it's I would say bath. the Warriors don't really have yeah. that. Like they beat the Grizzlies every time. It doesn't matter if they have Steph, Wiggs, or without them, they're going to beat them. I'm not, I'm never concerned. I'm never concerned. I don't care if the Grizzlies can be at full health. They, they can't touch the Warriors. Uh, but I anybody agree. else on the other hand is like, uh, we'll see. Only team we'll the see Warriors can't be right anyway, now is the Thunder, um, to be honest. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> let's move forward and talk about the Warriors for a second. So Golden State Warriors, ladies and gentlemen, are the fifth seed in the Western Conference, still despite losing to Anthony Davis last night, literally just AD, because nobody could stop him. Bro went stupid. Uh, shout out to the Lakers, though. The Warriors are the fifth seed, ladies and gentlemen. Steph Curry just returned to the lineup last night. You know what I'm saying? Had a pretty good game in limited minutes. Went 8 for 20 in the fourth quarter. Uh, or, or yeah, eight for 20, uh, had a pretty big fourth quarter in terms of turning it around for the Warriors in, entirely. But when we look at this Golden State team, ladies and gentlemen, uh, they look a little bit different now than they did during the first 12, 13 games of the season. And one man in particular that looks completely different than he did in the first 12 to 13 games of the season is one Clizzy Clay Thompson, Captain Clay, uh, Role model to every toaster and dog lover out there. Clay Thompson, all right? Clay Thompson, through his first 13, first 12 games of the season, was averaging 15 points a game, uh, four rebounds, 2.4 assists on 35, 33, 81 shooting splits. Absolutely atrocious. Terrible, right? Clay Thompson goes on to be slandered by most NBA fans, including our very own Saney, which him and I had, you know, a little back and forth about this. And I just kept telling Saney, I remember, um, uh, a, oh, a yeah, little back and so, forth. I was moderating that. <laughs> that that was, was bad, was bad. bro. I could not break y'all you know, up. Was saying things along the lines of Clay's washed. He's not gonna, you know, be, he can't do what he used to do back in the old days. Blah 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 blah. I was saying, give him time. Give him time. Give him time. I remember saying in the episode, I can't wait for Clay to go stupid just to see how fast the narrative changes around Klay Thompson. And Sadie wasn't alone in this, so I'm not just I'm not going at him. He wasn't alone. Warriors fans were doing the exact same thing. I saw a lot of comments saying, trade him, trade Klay Thompson. Right, trade Klay Thompson. Trade Klay Thompson, bench him, bench Klay Thompson. Right, bench Klay Thompson. Uh, uh, get, him, get him out of here. Don't sign him to the extension, blah, 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 blah. His years are done. Klay Thompson in the last 38 games has averaged 24 points per game, four rebounds, 2.5 assists on 45, 43, 91 shooting splits. Oh my God. Clay Thompson in the month of January alone had a career month for points scored, points per game scored in a month, right? In February, he has two games where he dropped 12 threes. Two in one month. In one month, he had a 54-point performance against the Hawks. We can talk about that. Blah 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 blah. I can't. I can't speak 
any more like profoundly of how great Clay Thompson has been since Steph has been out because Steph has been out more than I, I guess anybody on the team. You could say Wiggins if you want to throw that in the air, but Steph's been out pretty much a good portion of the season or a good halfway portion of the season uh, if you add up both injuries. In that time, Clay Thompson also, by the way, is averaging a, a, a career high in three pointers made per game at 4.3 or 4.2. And if he's, it keeps that up, it's going to be the best that he's done in this entire career, which is insane. Clay, I mean, when you look yeah, at when, and I will say, NBA. when you watch like, Clay um, Thompson play back in, in this stretch without Steph Curry alone, because the Warriors historically without Steph Curry, if you look at Steph Curry, and I'm talking about from the years 2014 to 2022, 2014, I use that particularly because that was one of his first like all-star years where he was first like, you know, showing us, you know, who he was. They are four with Steph Curry since 2014. The Warriors are 429 and 139. That's their record, right? Insane. Without him, they are 51 and 92. Offensive rating with Steph Curry, 114. Without him, 107.5. Defensive rating with him, 105.6. Without him, 112.8. Net rating, 8.5. With without him, a negative 5.4. And a point differential of get this, plus 4,802. With Steph Curry, without him, negative 160. Negative. Yeah, 160. So it's insane. The Warriors somehow, some way, have found a way to keep their head above the water in Steph's absence. And that is in large part due to Klay Thompson. He has been absolutely spectacular. Jordan Poole has stepped up. Dante DiVincenzo has stepped up. Jonathan Kaminga has stepped up tremendously. And, and Wiggins' absence, if you if you watch. I don't know if y'all have been watching, but Wiggins, I mean, Kaminga is picking up the best player on the other team, full court pressure. They are taking advantage of him being 20 years old. They are just saying, you have the most athleticism on this team. Go out there and do what you need to do in order to help us win. Now, additions for the Warriors that are coming back in as we hit the latter half of this season. Steph Curry obviously has returned. We are waiting on Andrew Wiggins, and we are waiting on Gary Payton II to return. The Golden State Warriors, I don't know about y'all, I'm going to leave this up to y'all. To me, when I look at the rest of the Western Conference, I'm looking at Denver, I'm looking at Dallas, I'm looking at Phoenix. I'm looking at Memphis. I'm looking at all these teams that right after the trade deadline hit, everybody was saying, these guys are going to go to the Western Conference Finals. These guys are going to go to the Western Conference Finals. Like I said before, the West runs through the Warriors, whether you like it or not. And I'll tell you this, if there's a, by some ch crazy chance that the Warriors end up facing Denver in, in a series, they're going to run. Let me tell you what they're going to do. They're going to run Jokic in those high pick and rolls. They're going to make that boy work on defense just like they did last year. And the Nuggets, and any Nuggets fan, is going to have to hope and pray that Jamal Murray and MPJ and KCP and all these boys are going to be able to hang with Klay Thompson, who's still been on a stretch and hasn't slowed down at all. Nah. I think offensively, Denver dominates they can. Uh, Golden State, but I think defensively, Golden State can go at them. But I think offensively, Denver is I can't say that. I can't say that without the, looking Denver at that starting lineup, bro. bro. Start fully healthy. Line up. It, it makes fully too healthy. much it makes sense too much for the sense. Warriors to go to the finals. I don't want to see it, but I see a path. It makes too much sense for them to to cap off the one of the greatest dynasties they've ever. It, the path. I, why is I it? I think last year why? was their cap off. Why? I think last year was their cap. Hey, bro, their cap do, you, do you not because see it? Knock on wood. They can no, knock on wood. I, knock on wood. If teams stay healthy like they are right now, um, I think they can get past the first round easily. I'm not. I'm not stressed about them in the first round. I'll, I'll tell you that much. They're not going to have to face the first or second seed. Third and fourth is up to like. They're not going to be able to play with the Warriors because third or fourth is most likely going to be the Kings, and then Mavs or Suns. If they if they see the Suns in the first round, yeah, you know, it could go either way. But I think Denver. I think Denver. Um, not only beats the Warriors, but they do it in less than seven games. Like it goes to six max for me. That'd be my think, guess, but uh, if I think Steph Curry shows up like he did last year. I sure, mean, bro, sure, but bro, possible, bro, 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 bro. Like Jokic, Jokic I want to believe you. Jokic with a healthy, you. Jokic with a healthy Nuggets team. <laughs> Jokic with a healthy Nuggets team. This is going to be the year I feel like Jokic proves himself in the playoffs because he's always been like the right. one year they were fully healthy. They went to the Western Conference Finals. You know what I mean? That's the way I see the Nuggets. Like people forget when the Nuggets are fully healthy, they're a very hard team to beat in the in the West. I told y'all a while ago, but it just feels like it's gonna happen where Jokic wins his third MVP. There's gonna be flat, uh, you know, you know, kickback on that. 
then he's going to get bounced in the second round because someone gets hurt for whatever reason <laughs> and a race war breaks out. I called I called this. You it saw Kendrick Perkins. Perkins. It's yeah, happening yeah, yeah. in front of our eyes. It makes too I'm, much I'm, sense. It makes I, too I, much I, sense. If I'll tell you this, Z. I'm, number one, I, I, I don't even think I said this yet. Right. I'll admit I was wrong about Clay Thompson. I'll admit I was wrong about Clay Thompson. But I was basing my opinion off Clay Thompson 12. from the games I saw through the first 20, whatever, how many games it was this season. So I don't think I was unfair in saying that he was trash at the time. I don't think he, I I think he just genuinely improved his game. I think he learned how to work around that, that whole knee injury. And I think his game, like Hoop said, really fits the modern NBA now. Um, The Warriors in general have gotten a lot better. I'll give you that. I will give you that. But I'm going to say this. I still don't think they go to the finals. I still don't think even the Western Conference finals because the issue with the Western Conference Finals is to make it past the second round, um, you got to play one of the top four seeds. You, you're forced to. If you're a fifth seed for the Warriors, I don't see the Warriors being a top four seed. Mm-hmm. If you're the fifth seed, I'm, I'm assuming they stay at the fifth spot. That's my guess. They could make it into the top four if they keep this winning streak, but they do have a pretty tough schedule. I think they stay the fifth seed. Fifth seed, you play the fourth seed. I think they can 100% beat the fourth seed because it's looking like I it's going to be yeah. like the Kings. I feel like the Suns will take over the Kings or whatever, right? They go to the second round. Now they got to play the first, the first, the first. Not even talking team. about the Clippers yet. They got to beat the Nuggets. <laughs> Tyron Lue if, gets his head on right. They'd be, they'd right, be dangerous. We're not going to talk about the Clippers right now. I'm saying this, Z. If even if the Warriors he make is it fumbling, to the top bro. four seed, think about it this way, Z. Even if the Warriors make it as a top mm-hmm. four seed, they'll be the fourth seed. That's the highest I can see the Warriors going. I, I do not see them getting a better regular season record than the top mm-hmm. three seeds in the West right now. I think we can agree on that because it's a little too late, right? That doesn't mean they're not better, but it's it's a little too late. You're a fourth seed. That means you play the fifth seed in the first round. No matter what happens in the second round, you're forced to play the first seed in Nuggets. The nuggets. You, can, really you cannot do. avoid seeing the Nuggets until... or You cannot avoid seeing the Nuggets until the Western Conference Finals. You have to see them in the second round. That's it. Unless they somehow, by some miracle, become a third-seeded team or a second-seeded mm-hmm. team, they are forced to see the Nuggets in the second round. That's how the playoff That's bracket fair. works. They do not beat the Nuggets, in my opinion. But I will give you this. The Warriors did have a comeback. And I'll be the first to admit it. Clay Thompson is not trash. Yeah. I never said he was trash enough to get out the league. I didn't put him on a Westbrook esque hate, but I did say he was a lot worse than he was. He isn't. I have anything. I agree. This is some of the best basketball Clay Thompson has ever played. So kudos to Clay for the comeback. But I will say this: um, Denver is still my team to make it the out. Bucks the Bucks are my team to win the, the championship. The Bucks are still my team to make it out the East. Swear, I think we're going to see a Giannis versus Jokic finals. And I think the Bucks win it all. I think the Bucks win it all. I agree with you, Z. Mm-hmm. Um, I really, really want to see Denver win it. Um, and if it's and I mean, as a fan, I want to see the Clippers win it. As a realistic um, person, who yeah, I guess sure. technically we work, we can say we work in the media now, right? Um, and I have to be on here and give you guys unbiased takes. I want to see Denver win it. I think Denver goes to the finals, and I want to see somehow like Chris Middleton fall off the edge of the earth. Because you know that Chris Middleton cycle? You know what's scary, for by the way, for mm-hmm. the league, and nobody's realizing this? You guys know that Chris Middleton <laughs> cycle, right? We're in the plays like trash. Yeah, bro. bro. He ain't we're in the plays Jordan like trash. Bro. <laughs> he, we're in the plays like trash, and the playoffs is coming. So that means it's going to be, it, it ramps up. It goes, oh, he starts to pick it up. Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Oh, he's when trash. The clock he's trash, strikes he's trash, 12. He's trash. <laughs> Oh, it's picking up Michael Jeffrey Jordan. If a team sees the yeah. Bucks when Chris Middleton is Michael Jeffrey Jordan, oh my God! I don't think they get. I don't think they. I genuinely don't it, think yeah. that the score difference will be anything less than twenty points. With Drew Holiday playing the way he's playing right now, with Giannis playing the best basketball we've ever seen, with Grayson Allen going off for twenty and a quarter on a random night, bro. Brooke Lopez being yes, bro. Giannis bro, versus the player. Brooke Lopez. Brooke Lopez second. Bro, the Bucks. Are, Bucks Brooke Lopez the Bucks is so are cold. genuinely so good. The Bucks are so good, and Chris Middleton hasn't even hit that part of the cycle yet. I'm scared to see that. that <laughs> people forget the Chris Middleton cycle exists, and it's hilarious because it's coming, and nobody could do anything about it. Like if Game of Zones yeah. was still getting animated, I know you guys watched that. It would. It would be that a whole episode on Chris Middleton. That was incredible. It would be a whole episode I- on Chris Middleton. And it, it uh, I don't know. If I could say one thing, I, I do want to like touch on something else before we go off. But as a fan, I mean, I'll be straight up. I wouldn't want to see Jokic play in the finals because he's objectively boring to me as a, uh, you know, personality. But I think the Nuggets I'd want to, I'd want to see KD in the finals. I'd want to see the the Suns. That'd be a fun storyline. And as a, a fan, I'd want to see the. Knicks, I don't want the Suns to KD. win, man. I'll be honest. I, that's. I don't want the Warriors to win. <laughs> I don't want the Warriors to win either. I just don't want the Suns to win, man, because like. 
to me, that's such a like. Oh, you just added uh, Kevin Durant, like, bro. I agree. Yeah, like, bro. Like to me, like, know. like I'm never <laughs> gonna be the one to say like your ring doesn't count. Blah blah blah. But to me, like, imagine seeing, imagine seeing like Giannis. Even though I already saw him win a ring, like, imagine seeing Giannis who like stuck it through with the Bucks. He wins another ring for the Milwaukee Bucks. Or seeing like the Clippers, like Paul George yeah. and Westbrook getting a ring. Or seeing that would be fun. Like, you know what I mean? Like, or or, or seeing like the Mavericks, like Luca in the finals, bro. Like, there's so many better teams that i'd rather see than the suns and yeah. not better in terms of the team no better the, the in terms suns, of the, the story suns, the i think the sun story is kind of stupid oh the only, the uh, only they reason, just they, the added they added kevin durant they added kevin durant the sun's gonna have a, a, like, a part in this playoff run like historically wise we're only gonna say that because the if we get phoenix and and the mavericks in a round alone just give me seven games of that i'll be straight i don't give a damn what i don't give a damn if either team just give me seven games of that i will be content I will be content. That's my finals, man. I would watch every. I'm watching every minute. <laughs> nah, you know what? I'm watching every yeah, minute. Yeah, of... yeah, 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 yeah. I don't care. The Kings. I don't care what playoff series they're in. I'm watching every minute <laughs> of that because that's that's like watching a solar eclipse. <laughs> you don't get to see that a lot Bro, in your lifetime. For, that's for, just, the Kings are going to so be the first though. time. The Kings are going to so be good. The, this, I think it's so cool that the first time yeah. in my life that I'm going to see them in the playoffs ever. This is the first time I'm in my life, Hell and not. your guys' lives too, because I know you weren't watching when you were four. Were real. That the Kings are going to be in the playoffs. I also That's... desperately, I, I just wanted to very quickly. I know we're running low on time. Talk about the Knicks and the Celtics and the history. We're three and one against them this season. That, that would, would be, be the most fun series ever. That would the be a trash really good talk. Series. Every Knicks Celtics game, regardless of the outcome, I'm talking mm-hmm. going back two years, has been incredible. So many overtime thrillers. The the opening night last year with a double OT with Fournier and Brown going shot for shot, like ridiculous stuff. And not to mention, I feel like the Bucks have run away as a favorite, and I really want to see the East strengthen up again because I do think with Boston being that good, it would make for a funner Eastern Conference Finals. As of right now, you know, uh, Milwaukee's going to dominate, but they're uh, I, just I feel so you like know who they're, they're struggling a little bit as as the seating stands right now. And honestly, the Knicks have a chance to. I can see them in the second I, no, round. No, even if they make the four seed. No, I can see them in the second round, but it doesn't look if they see the Boston Celtics, it's more than likely gonna be in the Western or Eastern Conference. Oh, Finals, the, yeah. No, we're not beating the Bucks. We are not. Yeah, because they're the fifth seed right now. And to be fair, they're only two games. No, they're sorry. They're four games behind the 76ers, but they're only one game behind the Cavs. But the fourth and fifth seed, so, no matter so, what, will always see the Bucks or the first seeded team. You know what I mean? So they have to be the third seed in order for them to see the Celtics. I don't see that happening. I'm not going to lie. Just I'm gonna, because yeah, like, I'm gonna, I, 76ers I seem to have to fall off hard. Yeah, but um, I, I agree with you. I think that's that Celtics. How was that? A, uh, wait, did you say pass or pause? <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, you said pa- <laughs> I, I, I thought you said pause. I was like, what, gonna... did it, what was said? Uh, I'm just but no, say, I, I, I agree. I really like the New York Knicks right now. But I just wanted to ask you guys quickly. When you look at the Western Conference right now, when you look at the Eastern Conference, the playoffs is like what less than five weeks away, four weeks away, like it's it's coming soon. Uh, yeah. When you Crazy. look at the Western Conference, I think Eastern it's in like five. To me, when weeks, I look, yeah. when I think about contenders, Milwaukee's at the top of the chain, and that's over everybody in the league right now. Milwaukee, like I was watching the Bucks game the other night. And it was even the one that they lost the when they lost the the win streak against the Sixers. But just looking at how determined, like Brooke Lopez, Bobby Portis, Giannis, Drew, Grayson Allen, all of them looked like they looked like a team that is determined to make a statement in the playoffs. Again, like to just put themselves above everybody else. So I look at Milwaukee and I say that's a contender. I think that any team that can knock them off besides Boston, when I look at the standings alone, Philly. If all goes well in Philly, and I'm talking like. Imagine we can see Joel Embiid. Listen, 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 listen. Nah. Listen. I don't see it either. No. I don't see it. I'm don't not, see I'm not it, saying man. I see Philly I don't see either. I don't uh, beating see either. them. Serious. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that Philly, if all goes right for Philly, for the process alone, like like give me Joel Embiid and Giannis Antetokounmpo healthy for seven games. Throw in James Harden to help out because Harden was balling in that game. Harden's been balling recently. It's kind of been flying under the radar, but Harden's been balling for the set for the Sixers. It'd be a fun fun series for sure. It'd be a fun exactly. series. Uh, <laughs> but the Doc Rivers exists. Actually, no, Bud's not Mike much better. I'll be straight. Mike Budenholzer's not much better. I, I saw not. him. I saw him concede a game because Grant Williams was hitting threes and he refused to change the yeah. game plan. I've seen that. 
So I'm so, not going to overrate Boone Homer either. So it's, it's, a, it's a toss-up, I guess. I got Milwaukee, the coaching. Boston, and Philly that are like serious contenders. Outside of that, anybody that's going to give me a fun playoff series is Cleveland and New York. Uh, and I'm good with that. In the West, however, you got Denver. Right. It's weird. It's so weird. It's crazy how Cleveland's on a contender. Like, not, like you said before, Donovan Mitchell in the playoffs, bro. That's mm-hmm. what I'm thinking about. Some like no matter good game, good series or not, Donovan Mitchell like somehow just finds a way to lose, and it's like usually not his fault. But Man. yeah, he's gonna have yeah. 50 night and lose. I hate to say this it. This is a great that's, episode. It's gonna be. But anyway, this was a great episode. I think can this I, is the best way sorry, to Sorry, can I say one more thing? It's not related <laughs> I think I've to anything. I heard that four times from about. you, but I'm joking. Yeah, go no. ahead. <laughs> well, <laughs> you probably have. But uh, yeah. when Z was introducing his segment, he said, ladies and gentlemen, four times within two minutes. I'll, we got to do I'll an over under on that next time. I like our female okay. Democrat. <laughs> Between me and you, Sandy. <laughs> over under three and a half. Z. <laughs> oh, five <laughs> times now. Five times for the EP. Uh, <laughs> All right. Well, this is a great episode. Thank you so much for listening to episode 56. We will see you in episode 57. Peace.